Okay, now it's recording. Yes. Uh, good morning, Sadie. My name is Sarhan Abu Kalut, Sarhan Bassem from Brussels Morning. It's an online online newspaper in Brussels, and I'm also the uh, Brussels office director. I mean, I'm meeting you today because in order to comment or to get to give me your feedback, reflection about the chucking images we we all saw so in on the net because of the. Uh, African immigrants stranded in Saudi Arabia, and everybody saw that it was very inhuman. That's sorry to say that immigrants were treated like animals. For, first, first of all, I would like to know your like reflection, the like the first moment you saw the report or you saw the uh, graphic images there. Well, it is indeed uh, it's inhumane treat of of human beings. And um, I think um, this phenomenon now has been very much um, uh, worsened by the COVID-19 crisis because um, those uh, a bit more affluent countries who are dependent on, on migrant workers like uh, Saudi Arabia or United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Qatar, but also Malaysia, um, they are now uh, dealing uh, in a very uh, irresponsible way with migrant workers that they, they, are, they now are losing their jobs and then their, their regular rights to, to reside in the country. So indeed um, what we see in these uh, horrific uh, photos is probably something that is, uh, can be generalized to situations in, in many uh, countries dependent on migrant workers who have now uh, uh, want to expel those people without any rights and without any protection. Yeah, uh, what, what do you expect from the European Parliament presidency to act and to reflect against this phenomenon because it's increasing, especially in light of coronavirus? Well, I think uh, the European Parliament, who is the champion for human rights among the EU institutions, must uh, discuss the issue of, of migrant workers uh, in the COVID crisis. We are, of course, aware of many different kinds of um, uh, severe breaches of human rights because of the crisis, but this is something that has not been uh, dealt with properly. And this also has to do with forced labor, even slavery, modern slavery. And my personal ambition is that this parliament will draft a, a report on uh, forced labor and modern slavery, which, is, which uh, comprises uh, uh, probably uh, around 50 million people uh, today in the world. And when you add uh, other migrant workers, it's, it's a huge human rights issue worsened by the COVID crisis. And do you think it because always we, we read that the EP or the, uh, the European Commission condemns the, uh, the European Commission uh, acts or reacts or calls upon? And unfortunately, we don't, we don't see all this like tangible like reflection always like for us condemnation acting mm. but do you think that if this con like if this condition of these phenomena continue the the european parliament should do or take any sanctions towards all these countries like breaching or violating human rights against these immigrants especially in light of coronavirus there's also a trade policy and now um, there's quite a widespread uh, debate uh, in and around Europe about uh, how to combine trade with uh, respect of uh, human rights and uh, environment and other sustainability related issues. And um, uh, we are coming to a point where we have to agree across party lines uh, that uh, we don't have sufficient uh, guarantees that when there are very serious uh, breaches of human rights like the one we are dealing now, with uh, in, in, in Saudi Arabia concerning the migrant workers. Uh, we, we need to have uh, more sanctions, we need to have more conditionalities in our trade agreements and cooperation agreements. So um, it's, it's again the task of the European Parliament to remind uh, the EU diplomats and, uh, and the Commission about their uh, responsibility to raise uh, the issues uh, of human rights in, in their neg trade negotiations. So trade policy, I think, is a, is a new chance to, to tackle these issues because it goes beyond traditional diplomacy. It's really about interdependence between countries exporting, importing. And one of the things I think is now becoming a, a real issue is that there should be a mechanism to deal with, um, with imports of services and goods produced with uh, inhumane labor conditions. 
uh, forced labor and modern slavery. And the EU doesn't really have teeth here. The United States seem to be doing a bit better. Yeah, and um, what is very contradictory actually, then Mohammed bin Suleiman has been almost called as a reformist. And since then, uh, you see the killing of the journalist Kamal Khajoji, a lot of reports about uh, human trafficking, uh, like um, freedom of expression is restricted. Uh, what, what is your message uh, as a member of the European Parliament to the government of Saudi Arabia? Because a lot of violations against the human rights are coming and reported from, from the Saudi Arabia. W what would you say to Saudi Arabia in particular about that? Well, certainly I believe that those who have been complicit in, uh, in the cruel murder of Hashoji uh, should be brought to justice and uh, the EU can uh, uh, bring uh, personal sanctions against those persons. Um, now I believe that um, also we have to, to, to deal with the question of, um, of the sort of um, new wave in the, in the Saudi Arabian uh, elite to, to expel um, uh, migrant workers that were so much needed in the country and now to replace them with, with national compatriots uh, of, of the country. And this of course leads to great tragedies uh, uh, concerning the rights and, and situation of migrant workers. And, and what we see now in, in these horrific pictures is, is the extreme of the extreme and it cannot be tolerated. Yeah. Um, in comparison, on the other hand, that we, we recently hear that Qatar is doing something like good for uh, like signing some agreements in order to improve the situation of migrant mm -hmm. workers uh, for the World Cup 2024. 20, um, uh, do you think that or do you look to this like procedure by Qatar as a positive act in this way? Uh, yeah, these improvements in Qatar concerning the uh, situation of migrant workers is definitely a sign that uh, international pressure works. Not only uh, pressure by governments is needed, but also, for instance, sports circles are, are immensely important in this. Uh, we have other situations at the moment concerning Belarus, where we have a violent uh, suppression of peaceful demonstrations and stealing of elections. And we have some positive examples that sports people are trying to starting to react towards this authoritarian uh, dictatorship in, in Belarus. And what we see in Qatar is, is, uh, is the same, that finally sports people start to realize that it's a great reputational risk to them if they don't take into account these conditions in which uh, the, the facilities and, uh, and buildings uh, for the World Cup are being uh, uh, constructed and we I, I've myself been on an airplane from Kathmandu uh, Nepal uh, to um, Doha Qatar where I saw um, um, tens and tens of young boys very fragile young boys with very small rucksacks coming to Doha some years ago and and um, obviously uh, wanting to work uh, for their their living uh, in um, Qatar and we knew that every day uh, this kind of young people and other workers, other migrants, were brought back dead because they couldn't tolerate these horrible conditions in the extreme heat on the top of, of skyscrapers being built. So we need the reaction from government, civil society, we need it from businesses. We also have to start looking into what kind of business relations there are. And uh, I think this is a new area of, uh, of attention. Uh, that should really count business and human rights, that we have to make businesses accountable for human rights violations in which they are complicit. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for a short and very comprehensive answers. Thank you very much for that. And um, I will publish this in many outlets and I will mm. provide you with all links so you can also, in case, uh, in case the Al Jazeera was interested in that, I will let you know as well. Thank yeah, you very thank much. Yeah, thank you. It's, thank it's you an, it's, it was a pleasure meeting yeah, you. Yeah, thank you very much. Stay in touch. Thanks. Thank you very much.